Welcome to Overthinking Tech. Today I'm doing part one in a multi-part series looking at Volumeo, a software slash operating system, we'll get into that, that lets you stream your own music library via a Raspberry Pi or an x86 computer connected to any speakers you want without the need for any data to leave your home network. It has integration with Home Assistant, a Raspberry Pi compatible version, as well as, like I said, an x86 compatible version, meaning it will likely run on anything you have laying around. But today, we're just going to get started by looking at how to set up the Volumeo OS on a Raspberry Pi. So, first thing we're going to need is a Raspberry Pi. Yours probably doesn't look like this. Believe it or not, inside of this is a standard Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. I did not feel like disassembling this to get to the Raspberry Pi for this video, but for the purpose of this video, nothing else on here matters, just the Raspberry Pi, and I will cover why it looks like this in a future video. We will also need micro SD card, some way to connect that micro SD card to our computer, also, I suppose, a computer to connect the micro SD card to. And lastly, a power supply. If the Raspberry Pi you're using has Wi-Fi, that is likely all you need. If it does not have Wi-Fi, you will need a way to connect it to Ethernet. But today, I'm going to be specifically looking at how to set this up with Wi-Fi, as setting it up with Ethernet is actually a little different with how the Volumeo operating system handles that. Next, we're just going to need to navigate to volumeo.com, scroll down for build your own for enthusiast, hit get started. From here, we can select what we want to download, either the Raspberry Pi, x86, or they also have support for an Asus Tinker board, if you have one of those laying around. I'm going to make sure it's selected as Raspberry Pi, which should be the default. Hit download. Make sure that's downloading. And while we wait for that to download, we're also going to need the Raspberry Pi image etcher. So to grab this, we're just going to head to Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, this is raspberrypi.com backslash software. Download for Windows or whatever your platform is. Once again, make sure that's downloading. Once our downloads are done, the next thing we're going to want to do is open up the .zip file for the Volumeo OS and extract the pi.image. Once Windows is done and we have the Volumeo OS .image in a not zipped folder, we can go ahead and open the Raspberry Pi etcher. For operating system, we are going to want to scroll all the way down to use custom and you should get a window that looks something like this. We're going to want to open the Volumeo folder and select the pi.image. Uh, make sure you're selecting the pi.image and not the pi.zip folder. If you do the .zip, it won't, uh, won't properly image the micro SD card. So we'll click open on that. Once again, have to wait a moment. Once that's finished, we can just plug in our micro SD card. Ignore any pop-ups that Windows may or may not give you. Select our micro SD card from the choose storage button. On my system, it's the only one that shows up. It likely will be on yours if you don't have any other USB devices connected. And then just hit write. All existing data will be erased, so make sure there's nothing on it that you care about. And hit yes. Writing can take a little bit of time. If during that time Windows gives you a pop-up about a drive it can't read and asks you if you want to format it, click cancel and just really ignore everything Windows does. Once that's finished and we have gone ahead and promptly ignored any pop-ups that Windows gives us, we can simply hit continue and then remove our micro SD card. 
From here, the next step is to simply install the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Hopefully yours is a little easier to do that on than mine, which is a bit bulky. Make sure your Pi is powered down for this. We don't want to remove or insert a micro SD card while the Pi is powered. Once your micro SD card is installed, all that's left to do with the Pi is grab our cable and power it on. Now at this stage, you're probably thinking, how are we going to access this? We have a Volume EO OS, but we don't have any display, we don't have an Ethernet connection, and we haven't configured any Wi-Fi. Well, Volume EO has a really neat trick for this. It should actually have the Raspberry Pi produce its own Wi-Fi network that we can connect to, and that'll get us to our configuration page where we can configure our own Wi-Fi network for the Pi itself. If your Raspberry Pi doesn't have Wi-Fi, you will have to go with the Ethernet route, in which case plug in Ethernet, the Pi will be assigned an IP address, and you simply navigate to that IP address in a web browser. Once the Pi is finished booting, we should be able to see that Wi-Fi network pop up. I'm going to be doing this on my desktop, but I have tested it and it works perfectly fine on a phone as well. Once Volume EO is finished booting up, it should create two Wi-Fi networks, one of which is called Volume EO, and then one of which is an open network called Volume EO dash and then some number that I think is random. We're going to connect to that open network, and when we do, we should be prompted with an open network login page in our web browser. Make sure that you don't have any other internet connectivity like Ethernet on this system, otherwise you might not get this button. But when we click that, we should be directed to the Volumeo setup page. So from here we can select our language, we can name the device, I'm going to call this Volumeo Rasp Pi. We can select output. Here we should have HDMI or headphones for most standard Raspberry Pis. I'm going to select headphones, which will allow me to use the AUX port on the Raspberry Pi as the output. And then you'll be prompted with a page to connect to your Wi-Fi network. I'm going to select mine, input the password, and hit connect. At this point, your Raspberry Pi should be connected to your Wi-Fi network and will now have an IP address assigned to it by the DHCP server, which is very likely your router. If you connected your Raspberry Pi to Ethernet, you will also have an IP address and from this point forward, configuration will be the same. Navigate to wherever that IP address may be. I'm not going to show this step because everybody's network is going to look different depending on what your router is and what your configuration is. Additional note, you will need to manually disconnect from that Wi-Fi network the Raspberry Pi produced, uh, at which point you can connect back to your normal network we will be able to disable that open network on the Raspberry Pi in a moment. Once you've determined the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and navigated to that in a web browser, we should be greeted with the Volumeo dashboard. Now, I'm only going to cover a little bit of the setup today, as I don't want to spend too much time on this video going into Home Assistant integration and all of those things. Important things to do right away though, under network, scroll down and disable hotspot. This will just prevent the Raspberry Pi from producing its hotspot. There are use cases where you want to leave this enabled, which is why it is enabled by default. But for this use case of making it part of our network and having it be assigned an IP address, we're going to disable this. Click save. Next thing to look at is how to actually start playing music. So if we go back to settings again, we are going to go to sources, and this is where we can add
any of our music sources that we want. You could put all your songs on a USB drive and connect it to the Raspberry Pi that way. You can also go ahead and map a network drive. For name, I'm just gonna call this My Music. And we'll need to enter the IP address of wherever our network device is. So you may or may not have this memorized like me, depending on how often you enter it. And then for the path, this is going to start with the name of the SMB share. I'm just going to point this at my backup music folder for the moment. Hit save. We should know quite quickly if mounting worked or not with a green check mark or a red X. And then it should start scanning. The amount of time it takes to scan the library will depend greatly on how big the library is. Mine is several thousand tracks. We can see that this is not going very quickly. So at this point, just be patient and wait for it to finish. It can be a little non-responsive during the scanning process. However, once it starts finding music, we should be able to go to Music Library, which we can see is updating here. NAS will be for Network Attached Storage. And we should have all of our music available. This was only part one of my Volume EO series. I'm planning on it being a three-part series, with the next two parts being Home Assistant integration, as well as running Volume EO in a Docker container on an x86 PC. If doing either of those things interests you, subscribe and stay tuned.